All right, so we're looking at the re review questions. I've selected two topics from them, the ones for suspense accounts and error correction, and also control accounts. So we can start here with question three. It asks us here, what is an error of commission? Right, A says an error where a transaction has not been recorded. A, that's an error of omission, all right? That's an error of omission. So we say A is an error of omission. You forget to record the transaction. This error doesn't affect the trial balance, right? B, it says that an error where one side of the transaction has been recorded in the wrong account and that the account is of a different class to the correct account. That is an error of original entry. And then we would see an error where one side of the transaction has been recorded in the wrong account and that account is of the same class as the correct account. So our answer is C. All right, C is the answer. So let me give a practical example of it. All right, for example, you say, Let's say you make a credit purchase, right? Let's say credit purchase. Let's say you make credit purchase from a supplier, let's say O Limited for 300. Right? But instead of Crediting all limited, you credit another supplier, let's say J limited, right? You credit another supplier, J limited, right? Both of these, all limited and J limited, they're in the same class, right? These are payables, they're liabilities, right? So in an era of commission, what you would have done is you would have debited purchase, debit the purchase account, 300. Right? And instead of crediting all limited, you credit J limited. You credit J limited 300. So how you correct this error, right? You would have to remove the amount from J limited's account and take it to all limited, right? And it's to a visual representation. All right, so we say this is J limited or limited. Correct this error. Right. J limited credited him. What we have to do is we have to debit J limited again so that we remove this 300 from his account and we we'll credit all limited. All right, so that uh, error is corrected. So our answer here is C. And then D, it says that error where the numbers in the posting have been transposed, that's an error of transposition. Yes. Any questions, queries, clarifications? Right, whilst we're still on uh, 
errors and suspense accounts let's also look at question eight it's in the same caliber all right it's in the same category it says a limited liabilities a limited liability company's trial balance does not balance the totals are debit 384,000 the quarter credit 398,508 a suspense account is opened for the difference which of the following pairs of errors could clear the balance on suspense account when corrected so we also have to visualize this let's make a simple trial balance So it's telling us that our debit side is lower. We have three, eight, four, zero, three, zero. And our credit side has three, nine, eight, five, eight, zero. All right. So there's a they're different, so we have to open up a suspense account. So we put a suspense account here. And so since the debit side is the lower side, all right, when we get our difference between these two amounts, we're putting it on the debit side, which is the lower side. So we're going to say 398,580 minus 384,030, we get 14,450. All right. So you're going to open up your suspense account. Right, the balance is going to be here on the debit side, fourteen thousand five hundred and fifty. All right. So now it's saying which of the following pairs of errors would clear the balance on the suspense account when corrected? All right. So it tells us number one. So the debit side of the cash book has been undercast by ten thousand. 6160 paid for rent correctly entered in the cash book but entered in the rent account as 1660 all right so let's see this the first error it's saying that uh, the debit side of the cash book is under cast right remember the cash cash account is an asset account all right so whenever we have an understatement in an asset account we need to increase that understatement right so let us say if cash is understated by 10,000 right, we need to debit it to Increase the amount because whenever anything is understated, you need to increase it. So our general entry would be you'd debit cash another ten thousand. Debit cash thousand. Right? And then the suspense account, you're going to credit it ten thousand. This account is here to facilitate our double entry for this general entry we've done here. Right. And we go to the next error. It says that 6,160 paid for rent was correctly entered in the cash book, but entered in the rent account as 1,610. So meaning also the rent account has been understated, all right? Or find out by how much, all right? So we're going to say six thousand one hundred and sixty
minus 1610 or to find the difference because our rent account has been understated. 4,550. So our rent account has been understated by 4,550. The rent account is a, an expense account. I remember expense accounts. To increase them, you need to debit. All right. You need to debit them. So if you say we debit the rent account 1550 and you created the suspense account 1550. So these these two general entries, we're going to put them on the suspense account here, 10,000. And here we have 4,550. So if you add both sides, I'm saying if you add the right side, it's going to be equal to the left side. So our answer is A, okay, because we have cleared the suspense account by correcting these errors. So for question 8, answer is A. Any queries? All right, now we can go back to question four. Right, well, question four now. Now enter the realm of control accounts. All right, so we have question four here. It says, you pay was control account. Has a balance of, at 1st October 2018 of 34,500 credit. During October, Credit purchases were 78,400. Cash purchases were 2,400. And payments made to suppliers, excluding cash purchases after deducting settlement discounts of 1,200, were 68,900. Right. Then purchase returns were 4,500. 4,700. What was the closing balance? Right, so open up our payables control account, which is a liability account. All right, so they've told us the balance on 1st October was 34,500 credit. Put this on the credit side. All right, then they say during October, credit purchases were 78,400. 
right so whenever there's a credit purchase we debit purchases and we credit the payables account right remember payables account is a liability account and the credit increases a liability so would say credit purchases here is 28,400 Cash purchases were 2,400. This we don't deal with in control accounts. Whenever there's a cash purchase, you credit cash and you debit purchases account, right? So the control account wouldn't be affected by these cash purchases, all right? All right, then they've told us excluding uh, cash purchases were 2,400 and payments made to suppliers excluding cash purchases and after deducting settlement discounts of 1200 remember settlement discounts contra entries all right whenever there's a contra entry you debit the payable and you credit the receivable both of them are reducing so this contra this settlement discount here thousand two hundred oh, where did I put that yeah here, here one thousand two hundred right. and they've told us payments made to suppliers all right when you exclude the cars purchases and after you remove the settlement discounts was 69,000, 68,900, all right? So here we are paying our, our suppliers and that's reducing the amount which we're owing them. So we have to debit their payables control account, all right? So we say payments to suppliers, Eight thousand nine hundred. Right. Purchase returns were four thousand seven hundred. All right. Purchase returns. Four thousand seven hundred. All right, so we get our balance. Let's see which side is higher. Side, it's there. This will be the lower side, so we'll put hundred and two thousand nine hundred right. and our balance carried down. Have to total up our debit side also, so we find our balance carried down. Eight thousand one hundred. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, this 1200, this is discount received, not contra end. Discount received. Right. Whenever you pay your suppliers in advance, they offer you a discount. All right, and that discount to you is a form of a gain. All right, so what happens is you debit the payable. Then discount received, since it's a gain or a form of income, it increases with credit. So you credit discount received and also you credit cash. Whenever there's a discount received, that was the only correction I had to make. But any other questions? Are there questions on this one? Question four. Sorry, please explain it again. Uh, for the discount, this settlement discount. These discounts, when a, when, you, when a supplier wants you to pay them early, remember trade discounts. Trade discounts are offered to make you pay faster. All right, so if a supplier offers you a discount, all right to the supplier's end uh, there's a loss in money but to your end that discount it's guarded as a gain or a form of income all right so when you pay your supplier you'd debit the payable which is here the control account all right then you'd calculate your discount which you credit, all right, which you credit, because remember incomes, gains, or any forms of revenues increase with credit, all right? And you'd also credit the cash account as you have paid your supplier. That's discount received. Sir, yeah. Um, yes. On the cash purchases, I've seen it two thousand four hundred. Yes. But uh, on our tier account, it's not appearing here. Yeah. Yes. Cash uh, with control accounts we only deal with credit purchases, and whenever you're also paying your suppliers, cash purchases are not dealt with in control accounts. Cash purchases. This one you'd debit the purchases account and you credit cash, so you'd find that wouldn't affect this control account. All right, it was not going to affect the control account. So you have to be aware of those things. Even if we are dealing with receivables, if there's a, a cash sale, right, that cash sale is not going to affect the receivables control account, right? You would credit sales and uh, debit cash, right? So even here, with these purchases here, when you make the general entry, it's just debiting purchases account, which is an expense, and you credit cash. Any other queries? Should I also just add the general entries for clarification's sake as you are revising this? We add the general entries to 
credit purchases, you debit the payable, and you you debit pay purchases and you credit the payable. So let's put also the general entries to accompany this to help you start. So credit purchases, you debit purchases. And you credit the payable. Discount received, we've already got it here. Then payments to suppliers, you'd credit cash and debit the payables. This one payments to suppliers, you would uh, you'd debit the payables and credit cash. Purchase returns, which is return outwards contra expense account. So you credit and you debit the payables, all right? Because whenever you're returning goods, the money you're owing your suppliers reduces. So you debit your payables and you credit return outwards. All right. Does that make things at least better now? Very much, sir. Okay. So be careful in these multiple choice questions. There are those. There are those tricks they'll put in. You will be tempted to include this two thousand four hundred, but do not. Right? Do not. I repeat, don't. Okay. That's why you have to be a well versed with these general entries. Okay, so, so can we move now to question six? A purchase return of $48 has been wrongly posted to the debit of the sales return account, but has been correctly entered in the supplier's account. Which of the following statements about the trial balance would be correct? Right. So what has happened here is, instead of debit take, uh, return outwards, which is purchase returns, which is a contra expense account. All right. We debit the sales returns account, which is this is a contra revenue account. All right. And it increases with debit. All right. Remember, a revenue account increases with credit, but a contra revenue account decreases with debit. So meaning, once you debit this sales return account all right the deb when you go to the trial balance all right the debit side is going to be 48 more dollars than the credit side all right because um, this is a, a single error one account has been affected so the trial balance is going to be affected all right one account has been uh, wrongly debited, right? So meaning there's going to be an imbalance on your trial balance, right? You have increased this sales return by $48, meaning the debit side is going to be greater than the credit side. By how much? $48. So question six, answer is B.
clarifications, questions, queries? I was kicked out, sir. Let me just take a quick uh, repeat. Okay. Here what has happened is we've debited the wrong account. All right. And this is a one-sided error. One-sided errors are always going to affect the trial balance. All right. One-sided errors will always affect the trial balance. All right. So here, this sales returns account. All right. It's a contra revenue account. All right. Meaning it increases with debit. All right. Revenue accounts increase with credit, but this one increases with debit. So since this is a one-sided error, meaning when you go to your trial balance, all right, what you're going to notice is that your debit side is going to be $48 more than your credit side, all right, because you have uh, debited the wrong account. Okay, originally for this purchase return, the original entry is... Uh, you credit return outwards, all right, and you debit the payables, all right. But here, what has happened is you have debited the sales returns account, which has got nothing to do with this journal entry here, all right. Remember, purchase returns return outwards, contra expense account. All right, contra expense increases with credit. All right, and sales return contra revenue increases with the debit. So since we've added a wrong debit entry and it's a one-sided error, our trial balance won't balance because on the debit side would be 48 more dollars on the credit side. So there our answer is B. Right, we have question seven here. The receivables ledger control account contains several incorrect entries. All right, seven incorrect entries. All right, so what should the closing balance be when all the errors are corrected? Okay, let's start. Let's look at all of these transactions one by one. Opening balance, it's correct to be on the debit side. Remember, the receivables control ledger is, is an asset account, right? So it usually has a opening balance on the debit side. So the opening balance is okay here, right? Cash received from credit customers, right? Whenever our receivables pay, all right, when a receivable pays you, you are going to debit the cash account. Cash is an asset, so increases with the debit. So you'd debit cash, right, and you'd credit the receivable, right? Because when your receivable pays you, it's like they are reducing, right? The amount they owe you is reducing. The decrease in an asset is credited, all right? So the general entry for this one is supposed to be you debit cash 78,420 and you credit the receivable 78,420, all right? So this is not supposed to be here. It's supposed to be on the credit side. Right, let's even open the T account. T 
the account here. So opening balance bond brought down hundred and eighty eight thousand four hundred right here cash received from customers has to be on the credit side Cash received from customers, CRC. Will you remember this acronym, cash received from customers, when you're starting? Will you remember it? It's just that here there's no space on this side here. Will you remember it as cash received from customers? 2420. Okay. Next, we have uh, credit sales, all right? Whenever we make a credit sale, you, you debit the receivables, all right? Debit the receivable. And you credit sales. Sales is a revenue account. Even though you haven't received the money, you still have to record. All right. So you debit the receivables. You have acquired a new asset. That's an increase in an asset. You've also earned revenue. So this credit sales is supposed to be on the debit side. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, so any credit sale, you debit the receivables. Always. Always. What about uh, goods? You sell goods on credit. Sell goods. On... Sell goods. On... This is a credit. That's a this credit sale. Credit. That's a credit sale. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a credit uh, sale. Good <laughs> that's a credit sale. If you sell goods on credit, that's a credit sale. All right. But what about a cash sale? What do you do? If it's a cash sale, what do you do? I think a cash sale, since we're receiving money, uh -huh. we've received money. Yes. So we'll get the receivables. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. A, ca a cash sale, there is no receivable involved. Okay. A cash sale, no receivable involved. Even a cash purchase, no payable involved. Right? A cash sale, you would debit cash. Okay, and you credit sales. All right. A cash purchase, you debit purchases. And uh, you credit cash. Okay, so be careful about this on these uh, control accounts, right? Okay, I will okay with that, Mrs. Clara. I hope you've written down those points. Any other queries before we look here? We've got next contra entries against credit balances in payables ledger. Remember, contra entry, both the receivable and the payable are reducing. All right. So for a contra entry, the general entry is you debit the payable because the payable is reducing. And you credit the receivable. I hope you remember the, the contra in uh, the contra settlements. Do you remember this? Mm. 
you remember contrast settlements so it will be on our credit side all right since we're doing it so it will be on our credit contrast side. Right, let me re, let me re-explain the contrast settlements. All right, this is a situation where you have the payable and the receivable at the same time. All right, x. I always like to refer to x and y. X and y. All right. Let's say x is owing y a five thousand. X owes y five thousand. Right. So what is y to x? What is y to x? We don't remember. Y is a pep. All right. Uh, x owes uh, y, all right? So y is a payable. All right? Y is a payable. And then also in the same, in the same scenario, y is also owing x 7,000. Y owes x 7,000. So y again is a receivable, right? Y is also a receivable again. Yes? So it's vice versa. Uh, y and X can either be a payable or a receivable. At the same time? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's look at it from X's side, right? We are owing Y 5,000, so it's our payable, but it's owing us 7,000. So again, it's our receivable, right? So instead of us paying Y 5,000, then Y pays us 7,000, right? Instead of us paying y 5,000, then y pays us 7,000, we can say, okay, this 5,000, we can deduct it, all right? So that uh, y just pays us a 2,000, right? Instead of us giving a 5P, then gives us a 7P, he can just give us a 2,000, right? We deduct the 5P, and he just gives us the 2,000, right? So... That reduction in that 5,000, it's like our payable Y has reduced, right? And also our receivable Y again has reduced by 5,000. All right. Is that okay, colleagues? Any questions on this contrast settlement here? Okay, I assume we've understood. Yeah, oh, you can go to the next one. Irrecoverable debts written off. All right, this is like an expense to us. Okay, this is like an expense to us. So you'd say bad debts, irrecoverable debts. All right. Some of our receivables have run away with the money. We run away with the money and we can't trace them. All right, so that's, that's an expense. Meaning, since we won't receive that money, again, it's like also the amount which is being owed 
to us by the receivables will reduce by the same amount which we want to get. All right. Some receivables have run away with the money. All right. So the amount which is being owed to us by the receivables reduces. So it's 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 irrecoverable debts has to be on the credit side. Dishonored checks from credit customers, right? The customer tried to pay you. The bank refused that there's insufficient funds, right? There's insufficient funds. So general entry is you debit dishonored checks. Fifty, and you're going to credit the receivables. If this went through, if this check went through, the general entry would have been reversed, right? This. This because this was a payment the uh, the receivable was trying to pay you, but the payment has failed, right? Originally they tried to pay you, right? So let's say they tried to pay you the eight fifty, right? But since the transaction hasn't gone through, you would have to reverse the general entry, right? Originally this would have been the that would be the payment. Credit the eight fifty and debit the receivable. That's how it had to be at first. All right. Now the check has bounced. Right. There is no sufficient funds. All right. So we have to basically reverse this general entry. All right. It has to be reversed. Okay. Because uh, the money hasn't gone through. All right, so it also has to be here. Where is All right, we find that the balance. Looks like the debit side is going to be higher because there's a hundred and thirty-eight there, so it's that the higher side. So we put our totals here. One nine zero six zero. In the total, it's eight five thousand five hundred and twenty. So the credit side is the lower side. So it's a balance. I read it down. Hundred and nineteen thousand five twenty get one thousand three hundred 
1,133,840, which is A. So that is uh, the balance that's supposed to be there. So the answer is A.